Good morning. We got into Split last night and we're staying at a place called Anthea Rooms. And I think we've decided it's the best place we've stayed to date. Number one, the location is fantastic. It's yeah. about a five minute walk to Diocletian's Palace. And it's just so cute. The bedroom has these beautiful like herringbone wood floors and there's some bricks surrounding the windows. It's very clean. There's a TV that has Netflix and YouTube on it. The bathroom might be a little bit small and outdated, but the water pressure is great. The temperature is good. There's a heated towel rack. So our room is lovely. On top of that, then they have a very spacious kitchen and dining area. I believe there's three rooms on this floor. So that's entirely for the purposes of each of us. But even in the fridge, each of the shelves is divided and labeled according to the room that you're using, which is just another extra little detail that you generally don't see in many other places. So it's great news. And this room that we're in right now is a dining room. It's so sunny and beautiful. Great to have like breakfast out here. It kind of feels like you're on a patio, except for you're enclosed, so safe from the elements. Mm -hmm. But we're quite looking forward to going out into the elements and checking out Split. On the way in, we just thought it was absolutely stunning and we can't wait to share it with you. Cheers, babe. Cheers. We are just at a meeting point for our walking tour, so let's see what we find. We just finished our walking tour with Rocco and he was awesome. We learned a few things including that Split was actually founded by the Greeks and the name Split is the name of a vibrant yellow Greek flower that you see all around here. One of the interesting things about it, seemingly all of Croatia and Split included is how many people it was ruled by. Just like in Zagreb and Zadar it was ruled by the Romans, the 
Ottoman Empire, the Venetians, the Austro-Hungarians, and was even part of Yugoslavia, obviously, until 1991 when it became Croatia. I think also with the number of people that Croatia has been ruled by over time, then one of the things that we got told about, which is actually kind of true, is the influences that you get and the kind of cultural division between North and South. In the North, because a lot of it was really ruled by Austria and because of the proximity, then it means that actually a lot of Austrian culture has really carried over. And you can definitely tell that within the architecture, whereas in the South, then it really takes on much more of a Mediterranean feel. I, I said multiple times to Rachel already, like if you told me that this was Italy or Spain or anywhere else, and I didn't have access to a map, then I'd have probably believed you. This could fit in with pretty much anywhere else, really, that I think we visited along the map. Diocletian was a Roman emperor who used to rule here, and he actually built the palace for himself. He then ended up building himself a mausoleum. He killed a lot of Christians. And what the funny part is, is that his tomb, is that what we call it, was actually removed from the mausoleum and turned into a church, so jokes on him. It is now named after one of the saints that he killed. One of the things that definitely struck me at the beginning of the tour is, as I'm sure you can see, then kind of one of the major buildings in Split is Diocletian's Palace. And they actually have like a little board that then gives you more or less like an artist's impression of what it would have looked like back in that time. But the interesting thing is the wall that we're facing right now, that was actually just planted by the sea and the sea only. And we were told that this promenade that we're on right now wasn't built until the era of Napoleon. <laughs> so realistically, had we been here about 300 years ago, We'd still be in water right now. It's crazy to think about. <laughs> and speaking of Diocletian's Palace, that's where most of the tour took place. It is absolutely humongous. It is now used for tons of souvenir shops and clothing shops. There's cafes, restaurants, bars, gelaterias. There's even people who own apartments and Airbnbs there. Diocletian's Palace is not owned nationally. Parts of it are just owned privately, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, you can basically just have an Airbnb right in the middle of the Diocletian's Palace, which is just such a very bizarre concept. Kind of cool if you're into that sort of thing as a tourist. paid nine euros each and we're going to go into the cathedral, crypt and baptistry at Diocletian's Palace. It is small, but very ornate. But obviously the reason that it's small is because initially it was intended to just be Diocletian's mausoleum uh, before it then got completely repurposed and previously destroyed. There's a part of me though that would really have loved to have known what it would have been like in its original form to see how the mausoleum would have actually been laid out. Because, don't get me wrong, like the church is lovely, but um, it does feel like we've seen quite a lot of those recently. It'd be kind of nice to see some other stuff. <laughs>
so I don't know if it was really worth going into. It might have been more economical to just pay to go into the cathedral and the Temple of Jupiter separately and saved ourselves a euro. I think Nick would agree with me that none of that was worth the nine euros that we spent to see the three of them. There are so many more spectacular cathedrals and baptistries and types that we've seen and those were just all very small, not to be negative, just want to save you a little bit of money. Yeah, take your 18 euros and definitely spend it somewhere else. Like get a free walking tour, free walking tour, and hear the history from the outside. Or a nice meal, that would also work. lunch back at our accommodation and we've actually realized we have a lot more time than we thought because we're actually staying here for three nights for the first time since we started traveling. So with that then we are going to go to the beach. <music> back from a lovely time at the beach uh, we in hindsight probably should have taken the GoPro but simply put we forgot sorry about that next time we'll bring you in the water with us yep we've come back to the peristyle at Diocletian's palace because they have free music every night at 8 p.m. and for this occasion we have sandwiches we made at home nuts that we've actually had since Slovenia beer wine and water because you've got to stay hydrated. said it best so I'm gonna let him take it away. We just spend the evening listening to live music in an ancient Roman palace on a coastal town in Croatia enjoying beer, drinking publicly, doing it all on the cheap. You'd never be able to do this at home at all. If this is gonna be a taste of things to come then I can't wait. Until next time though, Take care. And keep smiling.